Hey everyone, I'm Kronos, and this is part 2 of my Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode speedrun and achievement tutorial series on patch 6. Since there's a lot of small extra things for controller or console players, in this video I'll go over Act 2 up until the end of Ketheric Fight. As always, if you enjoy these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions about anything in this uh, tutorial series, feel free to just comment down below anything about it, and I will be around in the comments section to answer them. So here we're going to start out at the end of our last tutorial series. So this is the start of Act 2, and we're going to go ahead and go all the way up to get grabbing the Moon Lantern right here. So now there's a couple different ways you can do this and some only work on PC, so I'll show the PC route first with kidnapping, and then also show the console or controller route, or the route without kidnappings if it is too difficult for you. So right here, we're going to go ahead and have Shadowheart transform into a smaller character here. So for instance, the Halfling is one of the perfect characters for this. And we're going to have our Tav kidnap Shadowheart. So if you don't know what kidnapping is, there is a video by Delph that explains it very well in depth. But if you want the shortened version, kidnapping is basically a method of just carrying an object within the game world with you as long as you don't cancel an action. So you can carry any character that is throwable, for instance, uh, or any object that is throwable within the game environment, like, wherever you want. So for instance, with this barrel, I can throw this barrel and cancel the throw, which is the standard kidnapping action. And then it gets attached to my character as me. if I'm, like, doing <laughs> some really weird things here. And when you do complete an action, for instance, jumping, it just disappears. So from here, if you want to bring the object back, you're going to just cancel any action. So just canceling an action just makes it reappear just within the game environment. You have to be very careful with this because if you do save and load the game with a kidnapped object, that object will no longer exist, and that includes other characters even within the game. So if I kidnap Shadowheart, save the game, reloaded the game, then Shadowheart would just no longer exist in the game world. So from here we're going to use kidnapping to our advantage here by doing precisely what I just showed here. We're going to go ahead and throw Shadowheart with left click and then we're going to left click and right click to cancel the throw from here so it's going to look something like this and once again it is pretty precisely timed to do this uh, action so you have to be uh, get used to how the timing works if you are struggling with it a bit uh, just take a look at how I do it in this video you just time it properly, and hopefully it works for you. From here, we're going to make sure we don't cancel our jump action for any reason here, otherwise Shadowheart will reappear. So we're going to go ahead and cast Featherfall, cast Enhanced Sleep on our tab, and we're going to make our way down and make sure Lazel stays up top here. So from here, we're just jumping down all the way to Cancif who is right here, and we're going to get some dialogue. So we're going to click one through the dialogue, and now from here we're going to cancel the kidnapping so Shadowheart reappears in the game world. From here we're talking to Kansif once again, selecting option one each time, and we're going to do this Illithid Wisdom check here. And this only has a DC 2, so there's no need to worry about failing this. It's very unlikely to fail. In fact, if you have... Uh, you'll have one point of inspiration here, so it's fine if you do fail it. If you fail it twice, that's a 1 in over 400 chance of just, like, getting that to fail twice. 
So after you do that, Karnas will appear, and previously, before patch 6, you could just pick up the Moon Lantern from Karnas after casting Command Drop, but now all these enemies will get aggroed if you do that, so we have to do it a different way here. So I'm going to show it the easy PC method of doing it. On console, you're going to have to do something different than this, I believe, since I don't think you can pick up objects while you are opening Open a chest, for instance, this rotting basket over here. So for what we're going to do first here is we're going to talk to Karnas, and this is going to bring up all this dialogue, and we're going to say, let's go to Moonrise. So now Karnas is going to get ready to leave. Uh, Karnas won't fully leave since they're going to wait for us. And we're going to have Shadowheart get ready with Command Drop here. With the Rotting Basket, we're going to make sure that it's as close as we can, but this doesn't really matter. As long as you can open it, just fine. That's what matters. From here, we're going to cast Command Drop on Karnas. And this does have only a 45% chance of hitting, but if you do fail it, you can have a second cast. And you can also level up Shadowheart for an additional cast, but make sure to level up Shadowheart as a wizard for the next multi-class, because that's what we'll be needing to do in the future to get Fog Cloud. So make sure if you do need a third cast to level up Shadowheart as a wizard and get Fog Cloud from there. And once again, if you fail it a third time, you even have long resting available. So there's not even a big worry about any of those. So just be wary of all the possible outcomes that can happen. So from here, we're going to cast Command Drop on Karnas here, and hopefully Karnas drops it. So once Karnas drops it, we're going to use the Alt key to show all the objects in the game world. And we're going to drag and drop the Moon Lantern into the Rotting Basket here. So make sure to open the inventory of the Rotting Basket and place the Moon Lantern in there by just drag and dropping it. What this does is Karnas is going to pick up his weapons and then just leaves. So all the NPCs in this area will leave, letting us pick up this Moon Lantern without worrying about any of these other NPCs around. And if any of them are just lingering around a bit, uh, like walking in this direction, just make sure to wait until all of them have left. If you didn't talk to Karnas before doing this, one hyena will be left stranded right here. So just be wary of that. Uh, you can kill that hyena with your two characters here if you do do that. So it's no big deal, but it is some massive time loss. So from here, we're going to go ahead, pick up the Moon Lantern, and we're going to go ahead, right-click through this dialogue, release the Pixie, and select Option 1 to get through the Shadow Curse. And from there, we have the Moon Lantern, and we are good to go. Now I'll show the Moon Lantern route without kidnapping. This is because I don't believe kidnapping is possible on controller. And I don't believe that you can put the Moon Lantern inside an object in the environment, like a chest or a barrel, or in, for instance. So this is going to be a little bit different here and a bit slower, but it should work pretty much the same way. So from here, instead of having our Tav kidnap Shadowheart, we're just going to have Shadowheart uh, do this stuff immediately here. So what we're going to do is with our Tav, we're going to go ahead and cast Enhanced Sleep on Shadowheart. And then cast Featherfall as well. And then with Shadowheart, we're going to go ahead and start making our way down by just jumping. Since jumping is a lot faster of a way to move around. And we're going to make sure that our party is not grouped up here. So we just want Shadowheart to jump down here alone with our Tav and uh, Lazelle at the top. So from here we're going to talk to Kansif 
And we're going to do the skill check here with by selecting all the first dialogue options. We're going to roll for not a one here. And Karnas should appear with the Moon Lantern. So from here, we're going to do the same thing and go ahead and talk to Karnas here. So just go ahead and do that. We're going to say one to go to Moonrise Towers. So our journal gets updated. And we're just going to make sure we don't follow Karnas too far. Otherwise, Karnas will start making his way forward. So from here, we're going to go ahead and prep our spells. So it should be in our character spell book here. And we're going to prepare a command drop here. So what we're going to do with this is cast command drop on Karnas. And same thing as before, it's 45% chance to do it. If you fail it, you can level up for Wizard with Fog Cloud. That's very important. So make sure you do level up Wizard with Fog Cloud on Shadowheart if you do fail it. Uh, otherwise, you can also long rest for refreshing your spell slots. But from here, we're going to, after casting Command Drop, we're going to make sure that we pick up the Moon Lantern as soon as we can. So hopefully this works out here. If not, uh, you can just retry it. And keep going again. So once we do that, make sure you go ahead and grab the Moon Lantern, which should be right here. And once we do that, we're going to get into combat here. And this time it's literally just uh, Shadowheart that's going to be in combat. And we're going to wait for Shadowheart to die. So there's going to be a lot of actions that are taken here, but it's whatever. All that matters is that Shadowheart dies here, since uh, yeah, it will end this combat and then everyone will leave. So if we do that, everyone will leave and disappear into the rest of the world. Uh, just have to make sure that all of them do in fact leave. You can see sometimes the NPCs will walk back and forth. So just make sure they are deloaded from the map here. From here, we're going to go back with our Tav, and we're going to cast Enhanced Leap and Featherfall on our Tav. And we're going to go ahead and start making our way down here. So with our Tav, once again, just jump down here. Jump down to where Shadowheart's dead body is. And we're going to go ahead and use one of our scrolls here. So I believe Lazel should have his scroll. And we're just going to revive Shadowheart right here. I'm not going to last much longer. So when we switch back to Shadowheart, uh, we should get the dialogue prompt when we look at the Moon Lantern, I believe. So character sheet moon lantern it might be kind of weird uh you might want to just place it in the world and then pick it up again sometimes it can get kind of buggy and there we go we start the conversation and we're going to go ahead select option four and select one to get through the shadow curse so it's quite a bit slower to do it on controller and keyboard and mouse, but that's the easiest workaround that I could find. And we don't need the extra scroll of Revivify here, so there's no need to worry about it in the run. So after you grab the Moon Lantern, uh, this route does split into two again because you can either kidnap Shadowheart again and do it the same stuff here or you can just send your shadow heart to camp so for instance uh i'll do the standard route here it's going to look a bit like this what we're going to do is we're going to kidnap shadow heart by just left clicking throw 
and then left and right clicking so shadow heart comes with us and we're going to be casting enhanced sleep and feather fall on our tav here but before we do this we're going to go ahead and with lazel we're going to have lazel go to last light in because we want her to grab an invisibility potion so with lazel we're going to go ahead and click right over here within the game world so this spot right here is around where last light in is it's between these two sort of branches here if you scroll in a little bit you can see this globe around which is isabelle's protection orb thing so as long as you click inside of this area you should be fine to enter last light in with lazel so you just left click here and then you'll notice Lazelle will start to move and make her way all the way to last light in. So with our tab who has kidnapped uh, Shadowheart, we're going to go ahead and cast Featherfall and Enhanced Leap. And we're just going to start making our way to all the necessary waypoints that we need in the run. And make sure once again not to cancel any of your jump actions here. So from here just follow the path I take. And if you are fast enough, you should be able to go pretty far before Lazel reaches Last Light in. So you'll notice that I will switch back to Lazel once the Dream Guardian says her line of dialogue. So from here, I'm just making my way all the way to the road to Baldur's Gate here. So just follow this route that I'm taking. It can be kind of weird, but you can play this back pretty slowly, just in case you want to watch it through again. So once again, just keep jumping forwards without cancelling any actions here. So if you do cast jump and then you find your tab like walking weirdly, just make sure not to do it again. So once you see this line of dialogue appear, switch over to Lazel because that means that Lazel is right at Last Light Inn. And we're going to go ahead and walk into Last Light Inn. And we're going to start with this dialogue with all of these Harpers. We're going to make sure just to select option 1 every time here. Just smash through it all. There's going to be a lot of dialogue here. And from here, we're just going to have Lazel start walking inside by moving the camera into Last Light Inn. And we're going to go ahead and grab this one potion of invisibility right here. So once you click on it, then you can switch back to your tab and you'll notice that you will pick up the potion of invisibility right here. And just keep making your way forwards to the road to Baldur's Gate here. So once again, if you are faster, it will happen at a different time. Generally, it'll happen all the way at Shard Temple here. So once you reach under this arch here, that's the road to Baldur's Gate waypoint that we want. We're going to go ahead and jump in this direction. And jump forwards here. And keep making our way around. And have to be careful of any enemies here. So just be careful to follow this path so we don't attract any unwanted attention. We're going to jump onto this rock here. And jump down to this stair here. And right here, this is the Temple of Shar here. And Raphael is going to be in the way and we don't want him to talk to us. So what we're going to do is make sure that we're sneaking here and we're going to go ahead and jump all the way to the entrance here and if we do this correctly Raphael will not see us even though there is a skill check Raphael will not talk to us we enter the mausoleum and we're just going to make our way forwards here so from here we're going to unhide and keep making our way to this puzzle here and do the puzzle in this order. So we do the Moonrise Towers button, then we do the Grief button, and then we do the General button here. 
So once we do those three in that order, we're able to jump all the way to the entrance of the Temple of Shar here. And here we are, right here at the Temple of the Gauntlet of Shar. Don't waste a step. So from here, just going a little bit further from here, just going to jump forwards, jump forwards again, open this door, and when we jump into this orb or circle here, we're going to get knocked back. And if you have kidnapped Shadowheart correctly, this is where Shadowheart will reappear. And as long as we do it fast enough, we're able to jump a next time here without this thing blowing us back. So once we do that, we can use the Umbral Gem. And yeah, let me just jump a little bit forwards here and make sure our tab or Shadowheart also comes with us here. And from here, this is where we will have splitting paths again for console and PC. If you don't want to do the kidnapping route uh, with Shadowheart or you're on console or controller, so after the Moon Lantern, you're going to do this instead. So with our tab, we're going to go ahead and dismiss Shadowheart here. So we're going to talk to Shadowheart. We're going to just skip through this dialogue here. Turn to other Something matters, to say we're sure. going to journey separately, As you like. say we're sure, and Shadowheart will just leave to camp. From here, with Lazel, we're going to switch to her and start making our way down to our tav. Since we're not able to do the same thing on PC where we can just click to pre-move Lazel, this is the route we're going to take instead. It's quite a bit slower. But we're just going to have Lazelle make her way all the way to Last Light in manually. So, instead of just walking all the way there, we're going to just walk down to where our tab is. And with our tab, we're going to go ahead and cast Enhanced Leap and Featherfall on Lazelle. And we're going to have Lazelle just keep jumping the way to Last Light in. So, just go ahead and follow this route that I take right here. It's pretty simple. Just keep making our way down without tapping into any enemies. And yeah. It's pretty much all the same. Just keep jumping. It's pretty casual this route. But this is probably the fastest way to do it on controller. And this is pretty much only for an invisibility potion that we need later in the run. So just jump our way forwards here. Jump here. This place is protected. And when we jump to here, we're going to get the dialogue with Jahira. Just keep mashing our way through it. And we're going to go ahead and enter last light in. And we're going to go ahead and pick up the Potion of Invisibility, which should be just inside this building here. So we're just going to go ahead and pick it up. And once we do that, we switch back to our tab. And we're just going to do the same thing as the PC route here. So Enhance Leap, Featherfall, and go ahead and mark our way to the gauntlet of Shar and the road to Baldur's Gate waypoint. So once again, pretty much the same route as PC. So if you've watched the PC route already, there is no need to rewatch this part, but I'll show how it looks like a bit faster hopefully. But once again, I'm not super proficient with controller here, but just follow the same path that I take. This is pretty standard. There's probably some other faster paths that you can take and that other runners have taken, but this is something that's the most comfortable to me. So from here, just jump our way down, jump across here, up this direction, and once you're going to run out, just recast your abilities, so enhance the featherfall. Jump forwards. 
jump on this tree here. We don't want to jump to, like, uh, the left part here, because what happens is, uh, in this area, on the other side, there's a bunch of enemies. So we're just avoiding all the encounters by taking a pretty specific path here. So from here, just jump this way. Jump to here. Make sure we get the waypoint before we jump here. Jump to this area. Jump here. Go through the door. Recast your spells. And keep making our way forwards. All the way to Mausoleum. So once again, once we're here, we're going to make sure we don't get seen. So we're going to go ahead and toggle our sneak mode as we jump across past Raphael here. So you can see even with hiding failed, we don't get the dialogue with Raphael. And we're just going to go ahead, open the door. We can cancel our hide mode here as well Whoever you are, leave. and keep jumping and do this puzzle so once again yeah so once you get here just go ahead and use these buttons i didn't know that the left and right buttons were the ones that you're able to select the button with so make sure you go ahead and do that Trap. and then just activate them in order that we want so once we press those three, we're able to go down all the way to the temple right here. So from here, skip the cutscene. We're going to go ahead, cast Enhanced Sleep, and just start jumping our way forwards like usual. Open the door. And from here, we're just going to jump to through the wall. Try to make sure if you jump quick enough, you'll bypass the blast again. Otherwise, if you are struggling with it, you can just instead walk around this path. So it's literally just what happens if you know the puzzle by heart. Just walk around the right there to use this as well. So from here, we jump towards this door and then from here we're going to want to get shadow heart back from camp so what we're going to do is go to camp we're going to go jump to shadow heart here and you can grab this bottle of water here it will help with catherick fight talk to shadow heart something i know and we're I going to go ahead exactly. and get All her right. to join our party again and leave camp to get everyone back to this part right here. Now I'll talk about how to do the Gauntlet of Shar. So there's two different routes on PC and controller. Uh, they're both pretty similar, but on controller you're going to have to do a little bit of weird things. Uh, to get around how movement works on a controller. So I'm going to showcase the PC route first, which is going to look something like this. So from here we're going to have Shadowheart transform back to her normal self, and we're going to have her walk up against this door here, just in between like these two yellow lines here. From here, we're going to cast Enhanced Leap and Featherfall on Shadowheart. And what this is going to do is we're going to have Shadowheart go ahead and jump. So we're going to toggle our tactical camera. And we're going to do the mashed jump button here that I talked about in part one. So it's going to look something like this. 
where we jump into the wall and fall through the ground. From here, we're just going to left click to walk to the right of this lever here. And we should end up falling down into the ground. Our camera switches to black. And now we're down to the bottom with Shadowheart. From here, we're just going to click towards this star here. And that's where the Ancient Signal Circle is for the Gauntlet of Shar for Shadowfell's entrance here, where the Night Song Prison is. So once we do that, that means we're good to go with Shadowheart. But we need to do a couple small things first in the temple, including getting the Night Spear. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go switch back to our tab, cast Featherfall, Enhanced Sleep, go through this door, and we're going to jump here, and we're going to cast Minor Illusion at the top here. This is going to skip this fight section here because all these enemies are distracted by the illusion. So we're going to just make sure we jump past them. Once we do that, we're going to jump to the very corner here to, so we can jump down towards this entrance here of the library. So when we get here, you're kind of on a timer here, so I'll do this quick. But we're going to cast Fog Cloud on this skeleton here. Uh, make sure you are outside of the doorway here when you do this. So when these skeletons are in the Fog Cloud though, uh, they will see you, so you have to be careful with when you time doing this fog cloud and whether or not you get seen, since if you do start combat with them, your run is pretty much dead, so you have to be pretty careful with this. So make sure to cast Featherfall, Enhanced Sleep, and we're going to cast Fog Cloud right at the bottom of the stairs here. It's not too precise. We're going to jump into the fog cloud. Then we're going to sneak, so we're hiding. From here, we're going to jump to this corner here, at the top of these stairs. And make sure when you're hiding still, we're going to jump with the mash jump here. So it's going to look something like this. Z scroll wheel up. And we should be able to jump, like, right across this lever. So you'll notice that now I can walk inside this room here. And that's all because I mash jump right next to this lever here. And we just clip through this wall. From here, we're just making our way to this door. And normally you need to do this riddle here by using one of the bookcases to open it. But instead, we're going to go ahead and use the barrel, which is in Shadowheart's inventory. So we're going to give that to our Tav here. So we put the barrel down right at the right corner of this door here. So if we toggle our camera here, you can see where I put it. It's like at the very right of this uh, dress here. Uh, at, towards the stack of books here. And we're going to walk backwards a little bit. And make sure you are sneaking this entire time, otherwise the skeletons will see you. But from the right side here, we're going to do the mash jump through to the other side across, so towards the center of this door. And we should land on top of the barrel and clip through the door by walking through like so. So it's going to look something like this. So we jump on top of the barrel, we fall down through the barrel, and when we click, we should be able to clip through. If we can't reach our destination, you can retry it. You can try moving our barrel a little bit to adjust its position. Make sure it's as close to the door as possible. And just keep retrying it. So try it a little bit more to the right, I believe. More to the right, better. And as you can see right there, I clip through the door, and now we are in the room with the Spear of Night. So from here, we can unsneak and grab the spear. You can also grab whatever other stuff you want if you feel like you need extra gold, but you shouldn't need extra gold here. So once you grab the spear, we're going to go ahead and with our Taff, fast travel to the Verge of Shadows. And from here, this is very important. 
you need to make sure you drag the Spear of Night to Shadow Heart. Because what we're going to end up doing here is with our Tav, we're going to end up going to prison. And that is going to get rid of the Spear. And the Spear is necessary for this end sequence here for Shadow Heart's quest. So if you're on controller, this part is a little bit more difficult. We're going to make sure that we split our companions here. And we're going to basically do the same thing that we did on keyboard and mouse on controller. But there's a small couple things that are pretty important that are pretty different with this route. So from here, we're going to cast Enhanced Leap and Feather Fall on Shadowheart like before. And with Shadowheart, we're going to move pretty much at the same spot here. So from here, we're going to jump through to this lever here where it says path is interrupted and do the mash jump. So it's quite difficult, but eventually you should get it. And it should look something like this. So when we fall down through the floor, we're going to make sure we turn on turn base mode. And we're going to go ahead and just walk here. So because we're in turn base mode, we have the standard walking path that you would normally have on keyboard and mouse just manually moving with your thumbstick will not work so in turn based mode we're just going to go ahead and do this by clicking move to and eventually you'll fall through the floor and same thing on keyboard like in keyboard and mouse now you are here unfortunately we won't have enough movement to reach all the way out of this area but we can move far enough here if you do have to, you can turn off turn base mode and then turn it back on again. And eventually, you should be able to just standard walk all the way to the Temple of Shar here. So, that's the first workaround that we're going to need to do on controller. So, now we're going to do the same thing with our tab here, with going through to the next area here. We're just going to be casting Enhanced Sleep and Featherfall on our tab. And then we're going to go ahead and cast Minor Illusion at the top of the steps. Same thing as before. So it's going to look something like this. Minor Illusion. I'm going to go ahead and jump past all these guys. So even if you do get close to them, it's fine. They won't talk to you as long as the cat's there from the Minor Illusion. I'm going to go ahead and jump down. And from here, like if you are struggling with your time, especially because you do need your Enhanced Leap and Feather Fall here, just make sure to recast them while you are outside this entrance here. So cast Enhanced Leap, Feather Fall, and then get ready to cast Fog Cloud. And once again, you need to make sure your Fog Cloud is not on top of the skeletons. So you might need to wait a little bit. If so, just that so that just doesn't happen. If you are also scared about it, you can wait a bit longer and recast your spells, for instance. And you can even pre-sneak right here, for instance. So you're just hiding here first before you jump into the room. So from here we cast Fog Cloud. I'm going to jump into the fog. Once again, make sure you are hiding. And we're going to jump to this corner here. And same thing as on keyboard and mouse, we're going to go ahead, turn on turn base mode. And this is what we do instead. So here in turn base mode, we're going to do the same mash jump here. And because we are in turn base mode, we're able to just walk through the door like usual or at the wall. And we can turn off turn base mode and we should be able to do the same thing here that we did on keyboard and mouse. So same thing as before. Now we're going to go ahead and go to our inventory. So that's going to be right here we're going to send the barrel from shadow heart to uh go over to our tav here 
So I believe it is sent to our character here. And we're going to go ahead and place in world. So I believe it's going to look something like this, if I can do it. Don't mind me, I am not good with controller here. Place in world. I think you might need enough space for it for it to work. So we have to be a bit careful here on how we do this. So character sheet. Yeah, I think we can just drop item and then we can move it around here. So from drop item, we can just go here and then Just go ahead, make sure we select the wooden barrel to move it. And just make sure it's moved right next to the door, like so. So from here, same thing as before, we're going to do our mesh jump here. From the right side through to the other side of the door. And once again, it is pretty difficult. You are having trouble. Just keep going until you can get it. It's going to be pretty difficult if you're not comfortable with controller. But I promise you, it is possible. So from there, we will fall through the barrel. Make sure you have turn base mode turned on. And we can path through the door. And once we do that, and turn off turn base mode. And we can go ahead, turn off our sneak as well. And we can grab the spear. Quite a spear. So from here, we're able to go and fast travel to Verger Shadows. And from here, we are back on where we left off with the PC keyboard and mouse run. So once again, you just have to be careful with how we do everything turn on turn base mode when you are doing the wall clips and it should work out just like normal also from here make sure that we give the spear of night to shadow heart here because we need to make sure that she has it and whatever other items such as this water needs to go as well so now this is where both paths of the keyboard and mouse run and the controller console run should go back to being at the same point here. Uh, there's pretty minor differences from here on out. The only big difference will be the brain cat jump or the obliate skip, which I will also cover uh, on how to do it on controller. But it's pretty much the same as the nautiloid skip so i will show that uh at the end of this run through but everything's pretty much the same on both versions so i won't cover the controller stuff here apart from the brain cat jump so from here you should have everything set to go make sure your tav basically has nothing and Shadowheart should have the Spare of Night. And this is pretty important. Lazel should also have the Potion of Invisibility. And yeah, this is basically what your inventory should look like. If you have any other stuff like bottles of water that you picked up with your Taff, make sure that's in Shadowheart's inventory as well. So from here, we're going to have Lazel. So we're going to switch to Lazel, and Lazel's going to go to uh, the Verge of Shadows here. And what's going to happen is uh, Lazel's going to talk to us, and there's multiple options here. You can have Lazel keep her in the party by selecting option 2. You can tell her to leave with option 4. It's up to you. Uh, so yeah i would probably just do option two just to keep her in the party just in case 
Uh, you can also do option 4, which I think might be a bit faster, because you don't have to deal with having an extra character with you in the party. But yeah, it's generally up to you. Uh, in this run, just for simplicity's sake on not having an extra character, I will choose option 4. So, yeah. So Lazelle will permanently leave our party. She'll give us the backpack with her stuff, so make sure this backpack goes to where Shadowheart's inventory is as well. And with uh, our Tav, we're just going to have our Tav hit the Shadowfell entrance here. She's going to get this dialogue with Shadowheart here. We're going to say nothing, leave her to her prayers, and then say... Option 1, really that's fast. And we're going to have Shadowheart here go into the Shadowfell entrance. So, this is a pretty important part of the run here. So we're going to do a cutscene overlap. So Tav will go to the prison where Catherick will be. While Shadowheart will be stuck in the Nightsong prison here. And dealing with the Night Song and Balthazar stuff here. So that's a pretty big split here. So what's going to happen here is we're going to use the Shadowfell entrance. And while we're in this cutscene, we're going to have our Tav go all the way to the other cutscene. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to have Shadowheart. You must gather your... uh, sometimes this bug will happen where it says you, you must, must gather, gather your, your party. Gun. Uh, if that happens, you just go to camp and then leave camp. It's a pretty annoying bug that can happen in your game, but it's nice that you sh could know this workaround like so. And I believe it has to deal with uh, dismissing Lazel sometimes. So just keep that in mind. So from here, it says gathered. your party is gathered. You Switch to your tab and have our tab travel to road to Baldur's Gate here. So when we do that, so when we do that, you have to be fast enough. So I wasn't fast enough there. So we're going to just go ahead and do that again. So make sure both our characters are back here. And you have to be fast enough to do this. So once again, you're going to just click here, switch your characters, and have your character go, your tab go to Road to Baldur's Gate. It's going to say this dialogue, say yes to you want to proceed. Shadowheart's going to try to go in this cutscene here. And we're going to cast Enhanced Sleep on our tab and start making our way all the way to this cutscene here with our tab. We're going to be stuck in this cutscene by right-clicking once. Do not click any of these dialogue choices here. Switch to Shadowheart, and then she's going to end up teleporting to the Night Song Temple. So you'll notice that we're in the Night Song Prison here, and when we switch to our Tav, our Tav is still in this cutscene here. So from here, with Shadowheart, we're just going to start making our way down to the bottom here. So Shadowheart's going to jump across here, jump down, move all the way, and just start making her way all the way down to Balthazar. So it's going to look like this, we just jump a couple of times. If you want to be faster, you can cast Enhanced Sleep on Shadowheart beforehand as well. And we're going to click all the way at the bottom of this ramp, and while Shadowheart's making her way down, we switch back to our tab and continue forwards. When we do that, our tab is going to appear in the prison here. We're going to go ahead, cast Enhanced Sleep, and jump down into this pit. This is down at the bottom where the Oblivion is. And we're going to go ahead and jump to this side. So from here, we're going to do the Brain Cat jump. So this is done by scrolling out here, sneaking, and we're going to see where this brain is. So the brain's going to have a vision cone 
of where it can see and you want to jump in the path of its vision cone and this is going to be a spam jump similar to what we have done in the uh nautilate skip and you have to make sure that you do have enhanced sleep and feather fall active while you do this so if they aren't active just recast them and then make sure you're sneaking so you can see the vision cone and then just mash jump in front of the vision cone it might take a while to get depending on the rng but you have to jump while the intellect devourer which we call a brain cat uh is pathing towards that direction so while it's walking that's when we want to jump and as you can see once we do that we jump to the other side through the wall and we can just continue our way forwards here so from here we just jump through same thing just jump here and from here you can continue on forwards to the bottom here if you want immediately which is what we would do in the standard speed run but i would recommend if you are slower at the game uh to go ahead and jump here to this neural apparatus here and what this will do is when we activate it we're going to get the cutscene here and we're going to select option two to purge the pods that's important do not select option one because that will start combat so when you select option two it will give you a ton of experience and that might be useful later in the run just in case you want an extra level up later on and that can be pretty helpful if you don't have it it's fine but it can just be pretty nice to have just the extra like insurance so from here use this restoration pod that's going to just refresh your spell slots and we're going to use this neural apparatus and level up our tap on our way down here so from here with our level ups with our tav we're going to level up with wizard doesn't matter what spells we have but we're going to want to make sure that we prepare witch bolt which is very important to have this is going to be used as our main damage weapon on Catherine. And then from here, with our other spells, we're going to make sure that we have Misty Step and Invisibility. So those are pretty important to have. I don't. I believe since patch 6, we no longer need Misty Step. So instead of Misty Step, you can use Darkness, since we will be using Darkness once in the run for Fireworks Chopping. But it's not completely necessary right now. That's normally what we do on the next level up. But since we do have the opportunity now, just select darkness and invisibility. From here, just make sure we prep invisibility. And I guess darkness since we no longer need magic missiles here. And yeah. Now for Shadow Hearts level up, this is very important. We're going to add a class of wizard. And with Wizard, we're going to make sure that we have Fog Cloud prepared. Any other spells or cantrips don't really matter for Shadow Heart here, so there's no need to worry. So we just click Accept from here. If our next level up, it doesn't matter either as well. So just select whatever can be Cleric, can be whatever subclass, but Shadow Heart's level does not matter from here. From here, we're going to go ahead and with our tab, we're going to go ahead and click on the door to get ready to enter the Catherick fight. No longer We've we're going to right click, but do not enter yet. So from here, we switch to back to Shadowheart, and inside the Night Song prison, we're going to go ahead and jump down towards Balthazar but not all the way down so stay behind this pile of bones here so we don't start the fight or the combat here from here we're going to sneak with shadow heart and walk all the way to this corner here you should be able to see it it's around this like corner of this rock 
With this, we're going to cast Fog Cloud at this very specific spot at this area here. And what this does is it makes Balthazar path towards the right here, so he's not looking towards us. Now we're going to sneak behind Balthazar and pickpocket this speed potion. And you have a lot of opportunities to do it. It's only a skill check 12 and you have like so many chances to do it. As long as Fog Cloud's still here, that's fine. And from here we're going to talk to the Night Song, which should start the dialogue. And from here this is very, very important. Right click six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And once this happens, switch over to your Tav and enter the Ketherick fight. So what that does right there is the Night Song is dead. The cutscene is basically completed and Tav is going to start the cutscene fight with Ketherick here. And we're just going to go ahead and mash through all this dialogue here. And yeah. So from here, Shadow Hearts completed the quest. And yeah. So Shadow Heart should just be stuck around in that cutscene. You can see the dialogue box is still happening. And Shadow Heart for some reason is here, which is kind of weird since that's normally not what happens. But from here, now we're going to go ahead and do Catherick Fight. So for Catherick Fight, it's going to be a lot of repeated spell casting over and over. And what we're going to be doing a lot here is animation canceling. So what that is, how that's done is just by moving our spell slots around. So make sure your toggle hotbar lock is on so you're able to move your spell slots around. On controller, you're not able to do this, but that's fine. All you have to do is just keep recasting your spells over and over. And yeah. So from here, make sure you are sneaking with your Tav. And we're going to go ahead and cast Witch Bolt on Ketherick. So this is a 44% chance of hitting while sneaking. If you are not sneaking, it is 25%. So sneaking is very useful here. So cast any Witch Bolt on Ketherick, and we have six attempts at casting this Witch Bolt. And the thing is, since we don't have infinite status anymore, like on previous patches, we're going to just have to cast Witch Bolt manually over and over. And while you do have 10 turns of leeway of dealing around 200 damage with each Witch Bolt that hits, Eventually, you might run out of Witch Bolt slots to use, but that's completely fine because another thing that you can do is use the Fireball Cantrip, and this also works as well, but is quite a lot slower. So hopefully it doesn't come down to that, but you can finish off Catherick with just Firebolt as well. So from here, this is how the fight's going to look like. We're going to cast Witch Bolt on Ketherick and hope it hits. If it misses, we just go ahead, sneak again, and then cast it again. So just keep trying it. We've got some pretty unlucky here, but once it hits, we're going to go ahead and keep recasting the Witch Bolt that has hit. And just move the spell slot around to animation to cancel, or animation cancel the Witch Bolt once it casts, and if you do it quickly, which is right after the strike hits, it lets you cast a tiny bit faster, which lets you get just a tiny bit more extra damage. So that is very useful to have. And from here, everything else is pretty much just casting Witch Bolt over and over until Catherine is dead. And because Ketherick is not able to see us while we're too far away from combat, and because he's in a weird state because the Night Song is stuck dead in a cutscene with Shadowheart, we're able to do this fight just like that. So once Witch Bolt runs out, as you can see I did 150 damage with one Witch Bolt cast, we're going to go ahead 
and do the same thing and just keep doing it until Catherick is dead. So if we don't get enough uh, Witch Bolt slots here, I will finish off Catherick normally with Firebolt, but yeah. So I'm just going to keep redoing this until Catherick is dead. So once Catherick is dead, once again, just going to do the same thing on Merkel. And the Witch Bolt stays attached to Merkel as if it were Catherick, so there's no need to recast Witch Bolt immediately. And just keep redoing this over and over again until your Witch Bolt runs out. So from here, if we get really unlucky here, you can also do an Arcane Recovery recharge here. So this gives you an extra two spell slots. I would recommend just doing it with the level one spell, since one spell is what is needed to hit only. And with Merkel, Merkel has a lot more advantage on hit. So it's a 60% chance if you miss, so it's a lot easier. So there's no big need to worry about it, so we're going to just go ahead and do the same thing again and keep going until Merkel dies. So another small thing as well, if you do have a bottle of water here, make sure to throw the bottle of water on Merkel or Catherick here, and this will cause your electricity damage to deal double. The amount. So if you look at the damage that I am dealing to Merkel here, it should be a lot more at double the value that it's normally at. And it can help speed it up quite a bit, but because we don't have infinite status, it is a little bit risky to do it since uh, you are missing out on a couple casts of Witch Bolt while doing it, but it's fine. It is slightly faster still to use the water bottles, so if you do have one that we picked up earlier from the first campsite, or if you picked it up from the second campsite, that is completely fine. And yeah, so once again, if we don't have any slots left of, uh, like Witch Bolt, we can just keep casting Fire Bolt while in hiding, and it is a lot slower. It only does a couple damage, sometimes it can crit and it does a little bit more, but as you can see, it is still possible to do it this way without uh, any spell slots. So that is also always an option if we really need one. So once again, we casting. We got very unlucky with the Witch Bolts here. So we're just going to keep recasting Firebolt here over and over until Merkel dies. And I will speed this up for you in the video. It is not too common to have to rely on Witch Bolt or on Firebolt to kill. Generally you're able to do it within just three Witch Bolt passes, but I was a little bit slower here just to demonstrate a lot of the other alternative options that you can do. So once Catherick is dead here, we're going to skip the cutscene, and with our tab, we're just going to cast Enhanced Leaf and Featherfall, and we're going to go ahead and jump to Catherick, grab his Nether Stone. By clicking on it, we're going to get this dialogue with the Dream Guardian. Just keep pressing one here. 
And then this is going to make Ketherick's inventory open. We're going to take everything from the inventory, jump to the portal here, and enter the portal to the surface. I've been thinking of all that you learned below. If you've got your breath, we ought to discuss our next steps. From here, we're going to switch back to Shadowheart. And Shadowheart's still in this cutscene here. And we're going to skip past all of it. And we're going to end up here where Shadowheart should be sneaking still. So make sure Shadowheart is still sneaking here. If not, then it's fine. Uh, sometimes you do get this long, long black screen here. And that's fixed by just switching from our tav back to Shadowheart, for instance. And yeah, so sometimes you get this long cutscene. It's done, Shadowheart. So it's pretty weird that Shadowheart came with us here. Generally, Shadowheart should still be back with Balthazar uh, while sneaking, and you can just exit the portal to return to the surface where Raphael is. And that's also an option but from here we should end up in this area like so so now i'll show the obliette skip on controller so it's pretty much the same thing on keyboard and mouse but because we can't move our camera right over the, the standard way by just close. like dragging our camera over while we're trying from. to jump as you can see, we can't move to the other side of this wall. But luckily, there is an area where you can try to do it, where it is around this area right here. So you can barely see through the wall here, but this is the other side of the wall. Uh, you'll see like this red patch on the wall. It's kind of hard to like show, but by just angling our camera downward from where we are and moving to the right it's this like sort of glass-ish shape like shade it's like stained glass almost so that's around where we're going to want to jump so once again make sure we cast enhanced leap on ourselves and along with featherfall and we're going to go ahead and hide so we get the reds area where we can see the character path and from there we can just mash the jump where it says path is interrupted while the guy is moving so it can be a lot more difficult than on the pc especially because you don't have as much time but if you do it correctly, you should be able to get that jump properly. So hopefully I can get it here. It is probably one of the most difficult jumps to do in the run. Since it is very precise and you have to be very fast with it. So that's it for part 2 of the Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode uh, speedrun and achievement tutorial, so hope you all enjoyed. Uh, as always, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave a comment down below to ask about it, and I will be around to help answer them. Uh, a lot of these tricks on controller can be kind of difficult. For instance, the Obliette skip took me a while to get, but I promise you it is possible. It is pretty difficult and will take a lot of practice and attempts to get used to. But yeah, hopefully it will all work out for you. And if not, uh, just feel free to ask if you need any help. And yeah, good luck to everyone trying out these runs on your own and hope you all enjoy learning the speedrun.